In the last video, we began setting up our problem for solving for the heat distribution in steady state of a rectangular plate with the set of boundary conditions. So this is a Dirichlet problem. And we said that if we assume a solution of the form u is equal to some function of x times some function of y, we're left with the following condition. This quantity over here has to equal to this quantity. And we said that the only way for two functions of different variables to be equal to one another is if they're equal to a constant. And we're going to call this constant lambda. And for now, we're going to assume that this lambda is bigger than zero. So taking this a step further, we're only going to look at this being equal to lambda initially. And uh, from that, we get that the second derivative of capital X with respect to X has to be equal to lambda times this capital X. Likewise for capital Y, we can trans we can translate this into this form. So what we've done is we've transformed our partial differential equation into a set of two ordinary differential equations uh, subject to the following boundary condition. So we're going to translate what we had over here in terms of our functions, capital X and capital Y. So when X is equal to zero, the heat distribution was zero. When X was equal to L, the heat distribution was some function of Y. And when y is equal to zero, this has to equal zero as given by this condition over here. And when y is equal to h, that's also equal to zero as given by this condition over here. And you should recognize this as a second order uh, ordinary differential equation with constant coefficients, which uh, we've seen how to solve. So you have to, uh, guess a solution uh, that has an exponential form, plug it into your equation, get uh, the auxiliary equation, and then solve for its roots. And if you do that for uh, this equation over here, get a general solution of this form. So you're going to get uh, complex roots to your auxiliary equation, which we just rewrote in terms of trigonometric functions. And then we can apply our boundary conditions for y. So these two. So we're told when y is equal to zero, which means this term goes away and this term is equal to one. So it's equal to a one. That has to equal zero. So according to our boundary condition, a one has to equal to zero. Applying our second boundary condition. we're told that this quantity has to equal zero. We dropped the A1 because we already said that that didn't contribute anything. And now we have to find a way to satisfy this condition. We can do it two ways. We can either say A2 is equal to zero, that'll satisfy this, but then that's saying that nothing happens. So it's, a, it's an uninteresting solution. 
The second way we can satisfy this is if this quantity, the sine of the square root of lambda times h is equal to zero. Okay, so we can say that's equal to zero. Or we can say this one's equal to zero. And we're going to pursue, sorry, it should be h. We're going to pursue this one over here. And you know, because of uh, what the sine function looks like is that there's several ways of satisfying this. So we can say that if the argument of the sine function is some integer multiple of pi, then our condition is satisfied because uh, the sine of x looks something like that. So at zero, at pi and at two pi and so on, uh, sine of x is equal to zero. So to take that into account, we're going to add uh, a little subscript, lambda sub n is equal to n pi over capital H. So we seem to have found a value for a constant. We just said it had to be bigger than zero. Uh, and to be able to satisfy the boundary conditions, this constant has to take on this value. So, for constant has to take on that, on those sets of values. Then the function capital Y of Y. So one part of our assumed solution uh, has to have this form. So some constant, some amplitude times the sign of n pi y over h. Okay, so we'll, we'll do the same thing for our second differential equation for x. And we already said lambda has to equal to this quantity. And carrying out the, the method we saw for guessing an exponential form for the solution. You get this as the general solution for our second ordinary differential equation. And for later convenience, we're going to rewrite this in terms of hyperbolic trigonometric functions. So these are uh, Cauch of AX. It's equal to that and cinch of AX is equal to that. And we're allowed to do that as long as we just play around with our constants B1 and B2, which we're free to do because they're just unknown constants at this point. And we're going to call these new constants B1 prime
and B2 prime. And because n can be any integer value, we're going to add a little subscript to x uh, to say that this, uh, you have multiple solutions depending on what value of n you take. Applying our boundary condition, or one of them, it said when x is equal to zero, this has to equal zero. And what this means is the constant b1 prime has to equal zero. So if you recall the properties of hyperbol hyperbolic trig functions, uh, cosh of zero is just equal to one, and sinh of zero is equal to zero. So we're only left with b1 prime. And for it to satisfy the boundary condition, this has to equal zero. Okay, so we're left. with this. So our general solution though far, thus far is for a given value of n, we have that u depend, uh, is equal to x sub n, this quantity over here, and psi uh, y sub n of y. So this quantity over here, we can add a little subscript to that as well. And we'll replace the constants b2 prime and a2 by c sub n. So it again depends on which integer we pick. So this is our general solution. And the problem now is if we try to apply our last boundary condition, uh, this solution in its current form can't satisfy this boundary condition. And in the next video, we'll see how we can remedy this uh, by constructing a general solution using the principle of superposition. So we have the idea is we have multiple possible solutions. We're going to superimpose all of them to, be, to construct a solution that can satisfy our final boundary condition.